Barton with Open Source TV. We're here at the 2007 Utah Open Source Conference. And with me today, right now, is Scott Robertson. Hi, Scott. Hey. Hey, uh, you are here. Uh, you presented on Django. Yep. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Django? What is it? Um, so, Django is a web frame for, framework for Python. It's the easiest equivalent is it's like Rails is for Ruby or Catalyst okay. for Perl. Um, in Python, there are a couple other major web frameworks. Django is one that's getting a lot of press right now. Um, Guido, the inventor of Python, likes it a lot. So, so he's given his blessing, and uh, that never hurts a project. Yeah, sure. So it's getting a lot of it's. There's a lot of heavy development right now. Um, a lot of activity. There's a lot of big traffic sites that have sh either switched to it or started using it. So. Is, is Django, does it run on top of Apache, or does it have its own? Um, it'll run on top of Apache, or fast CGI. It's pretty flexible. And uh, uh, how long have you been working with that, and uh, what kind of applications have you developed with it? Um, I started using Django just over a year ago. OK. Um, I needed to make a ticket tracking system for work, because okay. nothing else fit our needs really well. And Django turned out to be a good way to quickly produce something that was high quality to survive the load we had. Does Django provide uh, easy uh, interconnecti interconnectivity to databases, or is that just something that you rely on Python to do? Um, it provides its own database connection layer. OK. So it has, it has the MVC model. So you've got models that you okay. define that represent your database, and then you do views. and. They use different terms for things, but you okay. do views that render out the output and all of that sort of stuff. Well, cool. Now, you also uh, are responsible for a little Perl script called Augify. Yeah. And I've used that. That's awesome. <laughs> Take like a whole directory of Flax or MP3s and convert them to Aug. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and you also have a graphical version of that called, how do you say it? I say Geogify. Geogify. Some people say Gogify. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me your experience. Tell me about your experience writing a GUI application in Perl. Well, it, it kind of started as just a project I wanted. I wanted to do, learn to do GTK apps. And so I'd been wanting to get it. Like some people had said, I like your program, but this command line thing's too much for me. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted, it, it just seemed to work well. And I sat down and I read through a lot of D GTK documentation and I used the Perl GTK bindings, which it flows really well. It's actually pretty simple once you get a couple of the basics down. They've added a couple things to make some things in GTK that are hard, like especially doing lists, which are part of the tree view widgets, and that's mm -hmm. just a mess. They've provided some simplifications to make it easy to do in Perl. You know, oh, things good. that make sense for Perl. Yeah, where list is kind of a native thing in Perl. Yeah. That's nice. Um, so let's talk, let's back up a little bit for people who maybe don't really understand why you would ever want to convert a sound file, say, from MP3 or FLAC to uh, Og Morbus. Yeah. Why would somebody want to do that? Well, in the case of FLAC, um, the, re the reason I wrote the script was I got a new set of speakers, and I could suddenly hear that my AUG files weren't as crisp and clean as the CDs that they were ripped from. OK. And that's because AUGs, to compress down the data. It's a lossy compression. Yeah, you lose some data. And so I started ripping to FLAC. But my poor little laptop only had a 20 gig drive. Oh, boy. It, it just couldn't handle my music. Uh -huh. So I needed a way to go from all my FLAC files to my AUGs. And I already had this elaborate directory scheme that I didn't want to have to replicate. So I wrote, it started out as a shell script, which didn't, didn't last very long as a shell script. But that just went through and replicated the directories and the files and the tags. Cool. Tell me why uh, AUG and not MP3. I personally like AUG as a format better. You get a higher rate of compression for better sound quality than you do for MP3. And for me, I. It just seems to make sense, and it's open. It's open. You know, there's every platform I use, I can get AUG running on it. That's true. Do you use any portable music players that support AUG Vorbis? Um, I don't. I'm when it comes to portable stuff, I'm 
I like to have a user interface that to me makes more sense. I have an iPod. Oh, okay. Which is why Augify picked up MP3 support. Oh, I see. But I see. Well, it's been very interesting talking to Scott here. Doran Barton at the Open Source Conference here in Utah for uh, Open Source TV. See you later. Okay.